Alright guys, it's that time again, it's time to go balls deep, and today I'm going to explain my simple theory on Black Clover regarding the elves, and what I actually think went down in the betrayal at Lish's wedding, and you can let me know what your theory is in the comment section below, and also tell me if my theory has some weight to it at the end of the video. This video will contain major, major, major spoilers for anime only watchers, so if you haven't caught up, I'm warning you right now, I'm going to talk a lot about the manga from chapter 100 onwards. Now let's cue the intro. Okay firstly, let's clear a few things up about the betrayal that caused the massacre of the elf race. This way we are all on the same page and can think about the bigger picture. Now we all know the original Licht was the leader of the elf tribe. However, when I say leader, we need to understand that the culture of the elves seems a bit different of human beings. Their hierarchy system does not follow the traditional monarchy system the humans have. Humans in Black Clover follow a system in which there is royalty, nobles, common folk and peasants. This monarchy has also clearly caused a power system and oligarchy where there is inequality and prejudice. An oligarchy is a small group of people having control of a country or organization. The king currently in Black Clover is the 13th of his name which tells you what is going on. The elves don't seem to suffer this problem even though Licht is their leader of the tribe. For humans, people of royalty and nobles are automatically given wealth, have higher magic power and status as well as given more opportunities due to their manner. I mean for god's sake, the first ever commoner to become a magic night with Zora's father Zara and this was only achieved 10 to 15 years ago. Even then he was killed by his own comrades of higher noble status. In terms of the elves, everyone seems to be treated equally with no prejudice. This is why when we see the elves resurrected in humans, have you guys even noticed how they always point out the flaw in humans and that human royalty and nobles are trash, they seem to hate them the most. On the contrary, all elves are known to have significant magic power and treat each other with equality. Licht was the leader of the tribe who also wielded sword magic and had access to forbidden spells which seem exclusive to the elf race. He also had a full leaf grimoire. Now please remember how the witch queen said only elves can bring out the true magic power of the stones. Licht ended up falling in love with a human woman named Tetia and when Licht was a child he said to Veto that elves and humans will one day understand each other in manga chapter 72. Tetia's brother was the first wizard king who also had a full leaf grimoire and light magic. The first wizard king, just like Licht, also believed that elves and humans would live in peace in the future. Licht, Tetia and the first wizard king within a few months became best friends and shared ideologies. Now I want you to think about this for a second. Imagine you're within a tribe of people that are worshipped like gods by human beings. You're living an amazing happy life with your people for your entire life. However, you hear rumours of how humans secretly want to attack you. You know of humans and their culture and how corrupt it is and it's definitely different from your own and isn't agreeable. You also believe that humans cannot be trusted and are of lesser status and you want to keep it the way of how things are right now, the culture and power system that benefits you and your race. Then one day, out of nowhere, two humans come along, befriend your leader and convince him to change everything. Wouldn't you not agree with Licht, the leader of your tribe, and think this half human half elf baby is going to destroy the system that you're currently fine with? If their ideology comes true, it would mean you would no longer be worshipped as gods and have to integrate with people you don't want to. From the characterization of elves that we have seen so far, we can clearly see that they are proud of their manner and race. So some of you might be thinking, you know, th this story sounds kind of familiar. And yes, I am going to mention the devil. Since we know religious theology has heavily inspired Black Clover in its design, please watch my other Black Clover videos to understand more, please please please. But for me personally, it's not far fetched to believe that the concept of the devil story in Abrahamic teachings could have similarities with the elf story. The devil was someone who was proud and didn't want to bow down to another race, a human named Adam. The devil was jealous of Adam who had the ability of naming things and the favour of God to become the next viceroy of earth. The devil believed he was better and of status and he became so jealous and proud that he denies God's command to bow down and get cast down. Before he gets cast down, he promises to destroy humans and lead them all astray to hell. Now think about this, an elf with pride in Lish's tribe can easily feel the same way. Why should an elf integrate and bow down to humans in the future? Why should their leader marry a human and have an eventual half 
half-human, half-elf lead the tribe and change the whole doctrine of the world. The elves that don't agree with the way things are going and would want to destroy this plan and keep the system the way it is. On top of that, human royalty and nobles will also want to stop this plan of Licht and the first wizard king. And now this is because if the system changes for the better, it would mean that they would lose their power and control over the monarchy system currently in place. This would make me believe that a human working with an elf in the inside to betray Licht isn't really unthinkable. Alright, so I'm going to butt into my own video because new information just came out. In manga chapter 189, the elf with Gorsh reveals a different perspective of the attack and his interpretation. He reveals that he sees something different than Patoli. The attack was done by nobles with light magic and tools to trap them. However, in Patoli's vision, he does not see this and just informs us that it was light magic that killed everyone and they blamed the wizard king. Now, either Patoli's version of events are wrong and not the full picture, and he could be lying since he has sociopathic traits that have been shown to us, or the elf inside Gorsh doesn't know the truth and no one knows the true betrayer. Someone must have told the nobles where the wedding is going on and how to trap the elves, but on the other hand, another thing we can say is that nobles got so greedy that they actually used tracking magic to follow the first wizard king and kill them, right? But either way, we know the king is the 13th of his name and he has retained power. However, I don't know if it makes sense that they only used tracking magic of the first wizard king because the attack seems like it was a trap and it was really planned, so if they only followed Tetia or the king, how could they say set everything up so perfectly, the trap was pre-planned and they activated the magic and killed everyone. So basically, someone must have told the nobles and the time and day of the wedding to let them create their trap tool magic in place, and, you know, and this could have been someone from the elves that leaked the truth and the first wizard king or Tetia wouldn't really do that. Now let's get back to the video. Another reason why I think this was an inside job by an elf working with demons and a human is because of what Tabata the creator of Black Clover says about the series and what he aims for Black Clover anime to be. Tabata stated in an interview that Berserk is one of the biggest inspirations for Black Clover. Berserk is another anime that follows a lot of religious theology and implements it into the anime. Now, if you haven't seen Berserk, skip the next 15 seconds, please. So as Berserk fans, we all know what happens at the end. Griffiths betrays his own people and comrades, he sacrifices them and joins the god hands thus creating his own plan. It was an inside job and betrayal of his people. In Tabata's own words, he states, I wanted to make a manga like Berserk but in Shonen. Whether it's for its sets, its battles or its history, this series remains an important source of inspiration for me. I wanted a manga in this spirit but in Shonen style. It's not uncommon for me to watch attentively with my assistants the staging of this model to prepare certain passages. Tabata even goes as far to say that William Vengeance and Patoli's character look very close to the villain Griffiths for this reason. Let me give you all the facts that we know about the massacre. Lish was to marry Tetia the day it happened. They were trapped beneath a shower of light magic. Now we don't know who the source of light magic was and the reason elves believe it was humans is because the first wizard king was the only human to know about the location and secondly it's because he wields light magic which Patoli saw as they died. This is Patoli's interpretation and vision. We know the narrator isn't 100% omniscient in the Black Clover manga because the information that is narrated sometimes changes according to the progression of the series. For example, in manga chapter 148, the narrator doesn't call Tetia's brother by name. This will only be revealed later on it seems and this is because it's all in Patoli's point of view. The knowledge that the narrator bestows is within context of the present or past most of the time. Even the stories about the massacre and betrayal are screwed to people's perception. Patoli himself doesn't even know the truth because in manga chapter 148, he says Licht probably. He keeps saying probably which means even he is uncertain of the events that occur. Occurred. No one knows the complete truth. Noelle as a child was told a completely different story of what the Witch Queen explained for example. And also the Witch Queen states that Licht is the one who summoned the demon but how can she possibly know that for a fact? Also why would Licht do that on his wedding day when he is getting married and needs to save his wife, child and people? Now number one is supposedly Licht both cast the forbidden magic when all of his friends died at the wedding to reincarnate them. However the witch said that Licht summoned the demon too. Are we meant to believe 
believe that Licht was stupid enough to fight the first wizard king by himself if he did it, even though he knows the first wizard king is also capable of killing all of those elves and there is a demon on top of that that he has to deal with. You know, that doesn't make sense. Licht and the first wizard king were likely partners fighting together. Number two is, why would Licht think the first wizard king killed the elves when his own sister died too? Wouldn't that mean the first wizard king was killing his own sister and unborn child? That's just stupid. It would make more sense if another light magic user that actually did the betrayal and was working with the demon god or noble humans. And we know the king for example that we saw in the manga has light magic, the nobles have light magic. For all we know, Patoli could be recollecting his own perception and screwed thoughts about what he thinks went down since he always was close to Licht and people even made fun of him for that. In manga chapter 134, we see him clinging to Licht. He was his best friend and didn't want to leave his side even after getting Tetia pregnant. Patoli is also known to have like sociopathic tendencies and is capable of not showing his true feelings since he did this to human beings in the Midnight Sun. He's probably so charismatic and powerful that those humans decided to follow him to only just be sacrifices for his plan. Patoli reveals his true feelings to them only after years and years of them giving their loyalty to him. How can someone be that psychotic on their path of revenge and to even consider their own comrades as ants to be used for their plan? We also know that the elves could not retaliate or escape and this will likely be due to a demon god and it is evident that demons possess anti-magic. The word used by the elves was our magic is being nullified. This massacre would force the real Lish to reset the tribe and cause elves to hate humans. This would go all according to the betrayer's plans to remain as gods and prove how disgusting human beings are and that working with them is absolutely a stupid ideology to follow. They do not want humans and elves to work together so elves hating humans and wanting to kill them would go according to their plan. We also know for a fact that the person that did the betrayal must have had the inside information and know where the wedding was taking place. The person must have known the powers of the elves and their culture. This gives us even more reason that it must have been someone within their own race working with the humans or demons to massacre them and frame the first wizard king. The reincarnation magic also made the inside job go according to plan. They must have known that the real Licht has this ability as an elf with the four leaf grimoire. Patoli himself recognized the existence of this magic and what it is when he was revived in a human body. If he didn't know this magic was possible, he would be even more confused on what is going on and why does he look like Licht. But he actually knew Licht had the ability to cause reincarnation magic somehow. The first wizard king and Licht himself are just like Asta and want humans and elves to live together. They both have shown no characteristics or attributes that display them to be prideful or arrogant. On the contrary, other elves presently and in the past are the ones that have these traits and have been shown to be way more doubtful of human beings who are of lesser power and different. The narrative pushes this idea to us that both parties don't trust each other but it was going to change for the better if people understand one another through collective exchange of ideas, technology and feelings. The elves themselves in the present admit that technology and knowledge from humans has benefited them in casting spells. Just look at manga chapter 155 where they admit it. This proves that humans and elves can benefit one another and this was the ideal Licht and the first wizard king hoped for. There is also evidence that the devil or let's say demons use anti-magic. This is because Aster's swords and grimoire actually belong to the original Licht. However when Licht had the grimoire and swords they were not anti-magic and performed as normal. It was only after the fifth clover was added which represents the devil and it's, it's a fact. Thus the devil living inside the grimoire only then it became anti-magic. Logically speaking this means that the devil caused the grimoire to change into anti-magic since he is sealed within it. Licht probably did this himself since he sacrificed himself and used reincarnation magic which is a forbidden smell and it has a side effect. This is also why Licht doesn't want the grimoire and swords back from Asta and he states that it no longer belongs to him. Now this could be because the original Licht who believes in peace and pacifism created the plan that one day a boy would be born with no mana and the grimoire will choose him. Licht gave Asta the sword back because the elves are corrupted with hate and only Asta can use the swords properly. Licht likely used another sealing spell or curse magic with the first wizard king's help. The original Licht who hasn't retained all his original memories yet which is evident from his PTSD and lack of personality displayed in manga chapter 156 where he suddenly remembers the betrayal and instinctively responds to save 
the elves. In addition to this, Patoli stated that Lich does not have his memories or personality back and it might be because of the cursed magic or artificial body. He is probably going by selective memory or knows the true plan and intentions of what Asta needs to do with that grimoire somehow, in which he created the plan with the first wizard king to defeat the demons and the true betrayer of elves. The real personality of Lich is still locked away somewhere and this is also why Nero is following Asta because go watch my Nero theory video, it is a possibility that the first wizard king's soul is residing within the bird and following the last resorted plan that they had to create for the future to have a chance of peace. Asta was destined for the swords and grimoire due to having no mana. The narrative of Black Clover literally implicits that sometimes like when the witch queen says it, it was finally time for the boy to be born with no mana and unite the world. The five leaf clover manifested for Asta because he has no mana, it could have only gone to someone with that flaw since demon have anti magic. Asta gained the grimoire also when he was in the battle and brink of death. The Black Clover manga in chapter 177 explains that magic is manifested in these times where magic is bestowed upon those with strong wills in the midst of crisis. That's why the grimoire was finding someone who has this flaw and finally came to Asta. The witch queen says that Asta's flaw of having no mana and being not special at all is what actually makes him special. Asta just like Lisht, the first wizard king and the supposed half elf half human child are the guiding principles to wanting unification between the races without racism, prejudice and corruptness. How can it just be a coincidence that they all share the same ideology? That sort of stuff doesn't happen in anime. So Asta has no magic and this devil power because Lisht and the first wizard king manipulated it and wanted this to happen. This also gives me even more reason to believe that the betrayal of elves was an inside job or human nobles who got jealous and worked with demons. Anyways guys that's just a theory, a balls deep theory. I hope you enjoyed this long video and I hope it all made sense to you. I tried to make it entertaining as possible. I tried to articulate myself the best I could and I had so many thoughts running through my head. Let me know what you think about the theory. Join me next time for more Black Clover content and follow me on Twitter or Instagram and I'll see ya.